Good evening, church family, and thanks for participating tonight as we open up God's Word to the book of Psalms, these songs that shape us. And I wonder tonight, is there a song that reminds you to approach God with great reverence and respect? Is there a song that reminds you that we need to approach God with great reverence or respect? I really enjoy that song, Indescribable. One of the verses says, Indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky. You name the, know them by name. You are an amazing God, all-powerful, untamable, awestruck. We fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, You are amazing God. And it reminds me that we need to approach God with great reverence and respect. I wonder, is there a song that reminds you of approaching God with reverence and respect? Because Psalm 128 was a song that the people of Israel turned to when they needed to remind themselves to approach God with great reverence and respect. When they needed to remember that the blessings that God gives to those who fear the Lord, who approach him with great reverence and respect. Now, wherever you are, can I encourage you to turn your hands up in a posture of receiving? And I'm going to pray for us. Our loving Lord, we confess that you are creator and sustainer. And Lord, we need you. And so, Lord, as we join our faith together across these screens and streams, our hands are open together as a symbol that we need you as people and as church. We want you to speak to us tonight. We're ready to receive. Amen. Well, we're going to read Psalm 128 shortly, so please get your Bible ready or your electronic device. And Psalm 128 is part of these Psalms of Ascent, these songs of ascent from 120 to 134. And these songs were sung by the travellers as they journeyed to meet God in Jerusalem. And just as these songs shaped the people of God as they journeyed to meet God in Jerusalem, so these songs, these psalms, shape us as the people of God as we journey towards the new Jerusalem. So let's read Psalm 128. And you might want to follow with me in the NIV or you might want to find your own translation. This is what the Word of God says. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. I wonder, is there a verse or phrase that draws your attention tonight? You know, we've prayed that God would speak to us tonight and that we are ready to receive. So I wonder, was the Spirit of God drawing you to a word or phrase? You know, Psalm 128 is a song about the blessings that God gives to those who fear the Lord, to those who approach Him with great reverence and respect. And Psalm 128 is broken up into two main parts. The first part are verses 1 to 4. And then the last two verses make up the second part. And this psalm begins by stating the theme. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. To fear the Lord means to be in awe of God's majesty that you are in awe of God, that you approach Him with great reverence and respect. To fear the Lord means that you take God seriously. To fear the Lord means that you put God first in your life. Those who fear the Lord walk in God's ways. Now, God's laid out His ways for us in His Word, the Bible. Want to know how life works? Read the instructions. God's laid it out for us in His Word. And when we put God at the center of our life, that's the fear of the Lord. Then God's Word, the Bible, marks the limits of what you will and will not do. 
to live life like that is to live under the blessing of God. To live under the blessing of God. Now, whether you are male or female, married or single, with or without children, know this. Blessed are you who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. And we see that God is willing to bless us. God will bless your work. Psalm 128 verse 2. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Now, this doesn't mean that you'll become rich. But it does mean that you'll find fulfillment. It does mean that you will find fulfillment in your work. It does mean that your work will provide for your needs. God wants you to enjoy the fruit of your work. God will bless your work. God will bless your work. And secondly, he will bless your marriage. Psalm 128 verse 3 gives us this picture where it says, Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. This speaks of fruitfulness and faithfulness. And maybe, fellas, if your wife's there, you should just turn and say, G'day, vine. Because this vine is a picture of fruitfulness. That if you walk in the ways of God, if you fear the Lord, your wife will be like a fruitful vine. That is, God's blessing will be upon her that is thriving, flourishing, fruitful, productive. And this idea of the vine within your house is a picture of faithfulness picture of faithfulness in marriage it's a picture of fruitfulness and faithfulness God desires to bless your marriage husbands and wives how you live for the other how you live for your partner how you live for your spouse has a huge impact on whether you will know God's blessing in your marriage Psalm 128 Verse 1 says, Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. So God will bless your work. God will bless your marriage. (laughs) And then God will bless your family. And this is a picture of the olive tree. And in the Bible, the picture of the olive tree is a picture of productivity and blessing. Now, olive trees are slow-growing trees. It can take years before it bears fruit. But once established, the olive tree needs little maintenance and will go on producing its fruit for decades. It's a picture of the way that we need to raise children. It takes years for them to grow to be independent. And as parents, we need to be patient as we invest into raising them into the training and instruction of the Lord. And then Psalm 128 uses this image of the table for the family. It's the table where the family gathers, where the family gathers together to share about their day, their stories, experiences and values. And so this table time, it was vastly important. And it seems like today that it's getting harder and harder for families to get together for meals. And I would encourage you, no matter the age of your children, no matter the makeup of your home, to carve out time for household meal times. And so this first section of Psalm 128 highlights God's blessings upon your work, upon your marriage, upon your family. But the second part of this psalm is a prayer for God's blessing. So we walk in God's ways, we fear the Lord, and then we pray for God's blessing. And there are three parts of this prayer of God's blessing. That God would bless you all the days of your life. Secondly, that God would bless you within the community of God's people. You see, one of the greatest blessings for us is to see people prosper. One of the great blessings for us is to see God's people prosper, to see God's blessing upon his church. Because we know that when God's blessings upon his church, we in two are blessed. 
And so this prayer is that God would bless all the days of your life, that God would bless you within the community of his people, and that God would bless you with long life and the continuation of your family. Now many of you probably know the blessings of having grandchildren. They are God's blessing in your life. So make sure when you tell others about your grandchildren, you don't just say, I love my grandchildren, but also say, I thank God that he has blessed me with grandchildren. So Psalm 128 is a song that speaks to us of God's blessing. God's blessing on all who fear the Lord. And it describes his blessing in terms of the ideal family. And you might be thinking, well, what if you don't have this ideal family? Well, first of all, welcome to the club. But secondly, Psalm 128 is pointing us beyond our broken, sinful families to the beauty and perfection of God's family in heaven. You see, none of us have perfect families here on earth. But we will all experience the blessing of an ideal family in heaven. God may or may not bless you with marriage or with children in this life. But the promise of this psalm remains. God has promised to bless you when you fear him and walk in his ways. So church family, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you desire to bless us. And so, Lord, we pray that we would have a great fear of you so that we would approach you with great reverence and respect. And as we walk in your ways, we pray for your blessing upon our lives. I pray for my brothers and sisters. Lord, as they fear you and walk in your ways, I pray blessing upon them that out of the fullness of Christ, that they would receive your blessing. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.